So in the next clips, we are going to speak about BGAs and we are going to start uh, with uh, some really nice pictures and explanation about collapsing and non-collapsing uh, balls in the BGAs and the, and the solutions and the paths for these collapsing and non-collapsing BGAs. Like you, you want a, 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 a BGA to collapse around the pad. So you have to have your, here's your solder mask right here, your green solder mask, okay? And there's your small, your pad is much smaller than the ball. Okay, and when you go to the oven, you want the, you want the BGA to collapse all the way around the perimeter of the pad to get the, to grip that pad. So you pull the solder mask away, okay? But now the BGA pin pitch is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? And then you get a BGA pad that's so small, okay, that you, that, you know, uh, if you, even, even, if you, even if you take the BGA and you collapse the ball around the pad, and when you do a drop test, let's say you have a cellular phone or any kind of device where you hold in your hand and you drop it, okay, the, 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 the solder joint maintains its strength because this because the ball is collapsed around the pad okay but the problem is that the but the pad detaches from the board from the from the prepreg material so when you drop it when you drop a, a handheld device and you go in and open it up to see where is it why did it fail it was the pad that ripped away from the prepreg you know the you know the blunt force yeah, because they are of, so of, small of the, the, the so weakest small, point is actually the, between the uh, met, uh, between the between copper the and the, the prepreg, pre <laughs> right? And so that, therefore, when you get to a really small uh, a pin pitch um, for your BGAs, and you got to do a via and pad, the, the, the you, I rec we recommend that you you you, do, you it, it grow the pad a little bit bigger so you can't collapse around it. You don't you don't collapse, okay? Because you have to put a via. A blind via or whatever kind of via in the pad because you can't fan it out like normal okay and so you make your pad size bigger as big as the ball or if not bigger than the ball then you solder mask define it you solder mask define would mean that you take the solder mask and you bring it over the pad a little bit by by, by 0.05 millimeters okay just bring the solder mask over the pad and then and then when the, when, the, when the ball melts you know, it's going to it's going to create a, a good um, um, a, a solder joint on the pad, and when you go to the drop test, the solder mask will keep the pad held down to the to the prepreg. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're you're adding additional strength to the prepreg pad connect uh, combination. This uh, was quite interesting for me. Uh... And uh, I searched for uh, some pictures about collapsible and non-collapsible balls. So this is the picture what uh, Tom uh, had. It is from his company, PCB Libraries. And you can see also this picture. Uh, on this one, you can uh, nicely see the solder mask. It actually goes and covers the pad. On this picture, it the mask doesn't cover the pad, so we cannot see it here. But this is basically what is happening, okay? So on the collapsible balls, the thin goes on the side of the pad. And in non-collapsible balls, this uh, side of the pad is not soldered. Ideally, you would like to cover it with the mask, so it basically glues or it holds this very, very small pad a little bit stronger uh, than if uh, the copper would be just like this. What was interesting for me was also to, um, to know that uh, there are different kind of balls. So different kind of material is used for different kind of balls. And uh, for uh, some balls, they will just no collapse. And uh, not only if not, it not only depends on materials, but it also depends on the size of the ball. So even if you create the pad like this, that's what I understood, even if you create pad like this, the ball would just not collapse around these edges. And uh, that's what we are going to speak about in the next video. The ball, the non-collapsing balls, don't forget, a ball is made out of lead. 
too, right? And don't forget, we're trying to get rid of lead, okay? So in order to, for a ball to melt and collapse, it has to be made out of some kind of soft material. And so when they make a, a ball out of tin, and maybe silver and copper, okay, the, the ball size becomes very hard, and it, it doesn't collapse. Ah, okay. But, I, but, 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 I, but I've never seen a ball not collapse on a, on a, on a pin pitch greater than 0.65 millimeters. So whenever you get, whenever you can't start, whenever you can't start fanning out the, the, the BGA, and you have to solder mask to find the pads, and you put, you have to put the hole in the pad to get the, to get the annular ring in there. Those pads are not going to collapse anyway. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to go anywhere. I, IPC used to say all the time, uh, you cannot solder mask to find a pad, a BGA pad, and they were really adamant about this until Motorola contacted me, and they said, Tom. IPC says, don't solder mass define. Our, our manufacturing engineers say solder mass define. We got our, uh, I want you to get Dieter Bergman on the phone. I want you to get IPC on the phone. I want to get my manufacturer on the phone. We, we need to talk about this. And then when the manufacturer engineers told Dieter Bergman that the stress test, the drop test, okay, the, the vibration and the shock, the, the, when, they, when they drop a, a Motorola phone, okay, that the, the, the pad rips away from the prepreg. Dieter Bergman says, oh, I know what you're using the solder mask for. You're using the solder mask to hold the pad down to the pre -preg. If you have to do that to pass your drop test, go for it. I'm so sorry that we said, don't solder mask. Solder mask defining a pad, a BGA pad is wrong. It's bad. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. And Dieter Bergman changed his mind. After talking to these, these people who actually do it, that's why we're saying that not everybody follows IPC because IPC says some things that don't make any sense. And this is exactly why I love to have these kind of calls and create these kind of videos because, you know, I can learn uh, the background behind some of the behind some of the decisions. And then you understand better why you are doing some of the things. Uh, in the next clip, we are going to speak uh, about this, uh, or Tom is going to speak about these tables, what you can see here. So this first table is for collapsible solder balls. This table is for non-collapsing balls. Notice uh, these columns which are here. So this is the ball diameter. Then here is the reduction. And as you could hear, for uh, the collapsing or collapsible balls, we need to reduce the size of the pad from the ball size. So uh, ball diameter is 0.75 millimeter. We need to reduce this by 25%, reduction by 25%. So the nominal pad size is 0.55 millimeter. But because of the variation, tolerances or Tom will speak about this, uh, you will get like uh, this kind of uh, range 0 0.6, 0 0.5 and then you need to choose which one to use. As I say, Tom will explain but I wanted to go through this table so you understand what is in these columns. For the non-collapsing balls, notice ball diameter is here. In this uh, case, we, we are not going to reduce the size uh, so the pad size is not reduced from the ball diameter, it is actually increased. So the pad is going to be bigger than the ball. It's going to be, in this case, for the ball diameter 0 0.75, we will increase the size by 15%. So the pad is going to be 0 0.85 millimeters, 15% bigger than the ball diameter. Okay, let's play the video. By the way, the ball size is normally 50% um, of the pitch. So if I have a, uh, if I have a one millimeter pitch uh, part, uh, the ball size is normally half millimeter, okay? Mm -hmm. Or somewhere in a, in a, in a very, in a, in a range around that range, okay? So, um, um, so now, let me see here. Um, so now if I, so, so here we have the reduction. So here we have the pad. See, so the ball, for a collapsing ball, the pad has to be smaller than the, 
than the, than the, than the ball. It has to be smaller. In order for the ball to collapse around the pad, the pad has to be small, smaller. Okay? So here's all your reductions. So you reduce the ball by 25% in the beginning, but then once you get down to a half millimeter pad, it's 20% reduction. Then when you get down to a 0.2 millimeter ball, it's a 15% reduction. Okay? So that's, that's how you figure it out. Now, once you get your reduction, you get your land variation. So here's your, here's your, here's your ball, here's your reduction, then you got your, your pad size, 0.55, but a 0.55 pad has a plus or minus 0.05, so it could be a 0.5 or 0.6, okay, as, as a variation. And IPC, the reason why I bolded these numbers here is that IPC will always recommend to use the maximum material condition. So even though they're saying a 0.75 millimeter ball is a 0.55 millimeter pad, don't use the nominal pad size. Use the use the, the maximum pad size or the variation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in, so in our calculator, when you calculate a pad, so you get this question all the time. They're saying, well, I have a 0.6 millimeter pad ball, but the, but the calculator is giving me a 0 .5, 0 0.45 millimeter land, even though it's a 25 percent reduction. Well, that's because IPC says use the maximum land variation of that pad. Okay. And that's the reason for that. Now, this kind of gets kind of complicated because math isn't always easy to a lot of people, especially when you're doing 25%, 20%, 15% reductions, and then you've got your pad size, then you've got your land variation, then you take your maximum land variation. Now, for the, for the, for the non-collapsing pads, okay, well, these are non-collapsing balls, these normally are the fine pitch parts, okay? These are the, these are, they start at the 0.65 millimeter pitch where you cannot fan out a, via, a, a dog bone, a dog bone fan out, okay? Uh, you, you have to have a via in the middle of the pad, okay? For, every, for a 0.5 millimeter pitch BGA, for a 0.4 millimeter pitch BGA, all the way down to a 0.3 millimeter pitch BGA, you have to have a via in the pad to get down to the inner layers. So, in a case, if you don't have any uh, recommended uh, footprint for a BGA, these are the two tables what can help you. But these tables are not really speaking about mask. We were not actually speaking about mask, you know, this usually green color on the PCB. So, uh, how we should design or consider the mask in our footprint. And you can guess that's what the next clip is going to be about.